Hello and welcome. Today we're looking at the ZL Toys SG907 drone, courtesy of TomTop.com. Check out their site for more cool quadcopters just like this one. Now this foldable dual GPS drone has two cameras, a 4K camera in front and a 720p optical flow camera underneath. It has plenty of automated features such as waypoints, circle me, follow me, return to home, auto takeoff, auto land, and plenty of others. So let's check it out. Now the drone comes in this small white square box showing the quadcopter there in the front. And this is the ZL Toys SG907 drone for ages 14 plus. And it has a remote tilting camera and it has two cameras including an optical flow camera underneath. Here at the top of the box, you could see the drone all folded and compact along with its transmitter. Here on the side, you could see that it has GPS capabilities. On this side, you could see we received the 4K model. There's a 1080p model, but the 4K is mainly for photographs. On this side, you could see the optical flow camera underneath the drone. And then underneath the box, you could see a listing of some of its features, such as GPS return home, point of interest, waypoints, electronically adjustable camera, follow me, gesture recording, gesture control, gesture photograph, so on and so forth. So plenty of neat features in this quadcopter. So now let's open up the box and take a look inside here. We'll pull out the styrofoam box inside. And you could see it says SG907. And everything is nice and neatly packed away in here. As you can see, the drone and transmitter are folded and compact. And here is the compact view of the drone. Very sleek. It highly resembles a DJI Mavic. Down below here, you could see its optical flow camera. And uh, pretty cool looking drone. And it's foldable. And it's very easy to fold out. You just snap open the arms and legs, like so. And it highly resembles a Mavic Pro. Very cool looking gray quadcopter. So pretty neat with its camera there in the front. And now let's take a closer look at its transmitter. It's a pretty sleek compact transmitter. And it has these uh, foldable arms or antennas. And uh, they're pretty spacious for a uh, cell phone. A pretty large cell phone but not quite a tablet and uh, it has an LCD display in the front and it takes a few batteries in the back so pretty cool transmitter and then we have the accessories in the box here we have the uh, micro USB charge cable to charge the battery along with a screwdriver to replace the propellers and then we have four folding spare propellers so all the uh, accessories that are needed for this drone and then last but not least this package comes with a lot of instruction manuals uh, for the app for the drone and in different languages so a lot of good detailed instruction manuals here as you can see a lot of uh, brochures and paperwork so pretty cool and we'll just set that aside here so now let's organize all this and take a closer look at the drone now taking a closer look at the drone this is a pretty cool looking drone that highly resembles a dji mavic pro and it has a nice glossy silvery finish as you can see and here in the front you could see its 4k camera that remote tilts but the 4k is just for photographs it takes 1080p or 2k video depending on your mobile device it does not record onboard footage as there is no SD card slot unfortunately and it is a brushed motor quadcopter that is foldable along with the folding propellers and it's very easy to fold in and out as you can see here you do have to fold it in a certain order starting with the rear legs followed by the front legs and you do have to align the propellers a certain way and here's how it looks when it's all folded and compact it's very sleek and portable and folding it out is just very easy just snap everything into place and there's no exposed wiring or anything like that down below you could see its optical flow camera that films in 720p and here's the 4k camera that is remote tilting 
You can see the Wi-Fi antennas there for 5G Wi-Fi. And it does have some lighting underneath the quadcopter. Let's uh, turn on the drone so you can see some of the lighting there. You can see on the battery it has some LEDs and some bright LEDs in the front. So pretty decent for lighting and orientation. Has a nice red light there in the back. So pretty good. And then you turn off the battery just some, simply by keeping the battery button pressed. And to remove it, you simply press the two latches on the side of the battery. And now taking a closer look at the battery, it's a 7.4 volt, 1600 milliamp LiPo battery. And it charges right here at the front through the micro USB port right here. And it takes about two, two and a half hours to fully charge it. And it provides the quadcopter with around an 18 minute flight time. And so uh, to put it back in, you just simply make sure that the contacts touch. And so you'd press the battery firmly until it locks into place. And so overall a well-built good sturdy quadcopter and uh, has a pretty sleek look to it and uh, it's pretty solid so now let's take a look at its transmitter now taking a closer look at the transmitter this is a comfortable and ergonomic controller with a nice shiny gray and silvery finish here in the back it has a battery compartment which takes four AA batteries as you can see here and they're all held in place with this lid and a screw. Now looking at the front of the unit, it has a bright blue LCD display with a lot of telemetry and information such as the signal strength, the number of satellites, the height and distance, the GPS mode, the battery charge on the controller and the drone. So a lot of good telemetry and information on there. Uh, going over the controls, we have the on-off button right here, and you can see the LED indicators there at the top. And then we have the left throttle stick followed by the right rudder stick. And then we have the rates of speed button with two rates of speed, and if you keep that pressed, it'll perform a gyro calibration. Then we have the return to home button, so you'd press that for the quadcopter to return to its takeoff point. Then we have the video button right here. And if you keep that pressed, it will enable or disable the GPS mode. Then this is the camera button, and you would press that to take pictures. And if you keep that pressed, it'll perform a GPS compass calibration. Here at the top, we have our uh, foldable arms for the controller. And they're very spacious to put a pretty large mobile device, but not quite a tablet. And then there's some buttons also located here at the top of the controller. And so these buttons right over here are to tilt the camera remotely 90 degrees, either upwards or downwards. So you'd push one to tilt it up or the other to tilt it down. And then these buttons right over on this side are for the headless mode and the auto takeoff. So the inner button is for headless mode. And then the outer button there is for the auto takeoff and landing if you keep it pressed. And the motors have to be on and idle. So a very comfortable, ergonomic, smooth, rounded controller that's of good quality and provides the quadcopter with a 500 meter range of control. Now let's take a quick look at setting this up for a first time flight and its app. Now setting up for a first time flight is very straightforward. Once you have a fully charged battery inserted into the drone, along with a fresh set of batteries inserted into the controller and a mobile device mounted on top, you would proceed to activate the drone by keeping its on-off button at the top pressed for a few seconds until all the lights on top turn blue. And then you should see the lights start to blink. Then you'd press the center button on the controller until that lights up and everything should bind automatically out of the factory. No need to push the throttle up or down. Next, you may want to perform a gyro calibration while the drone is flat at the ground level and not moving. So you'd keep the speed button pressed for a couple of seconds and you should see the lights rapidly blink, indicating a gyro calibration. And then you want to perform a GPS compass calibration by keeping the photo button pressed for a few seconds. Now you should see the rapid blinks. Then you got to rotate the quadcopter about three or four spins on its flat horizontal axis until you hear a beep and see the lights change. And here we have a beep. So now we'll rotate it facing upwards 
about three or four spins on its vertical axis till we hear another beep and now it should be ready for satellites and takeoff and you can move both sticks down and out to start the motors in idle and provide some throttle or hit the auto takeoff button and you can disable the GPS and start in optical flow mode by keeping the video button pressed and then you can start the motors and just provide some altitude but uh, what you want to do next is connect to the drone's Wi-Fi and use the app so let's go ahead and do that right now now once in your mobile device's Wi-Fi settings you want to look for an entry that says XL GPS 5G 4K and the serial number and if you have the 1080p model it may say something slightly different but it's XL GPS and so it has no default password or anything like that so once connected you want to go ahead and launch this app right here which is HFun Plus and it's in the iOS and Android app stores HFun Plus with the purple icon so you'd go ahead and launch that and you'll be greeted with this screen right here now there are a lot of menu options here on the main menu such as app instructions that provide a useful guide on using the app and what all the icons mean and do and then also we have flight logs then we also have some settings here that you could change such as the language you can do an update uh, there's also an anti-shake option as well and you can do a, a fix to photos so a lot of options in there then there's also this prepare to fly option that will allow you to do calibrations such as gyro or GPS calibrations so you can do those from within the app as well but primarily you want to hit start and right away you should get a live feed with the drone as you can see here and it's a, a pretty good clear live feed it does have some latency unfortunately but the actual quality of the image is pretty good and so the range of the FPV feed is around two to 300 meters. And you can also switch between the bottom optical flow camera for a live feed or the front facing camera as well. So it does somewhat depend on how new your mobile device is and what kind of technical specs it has. But unfortunately there is some latency with the drone's live feed. Now going over the app a bit, there are a lot of features within the app and also a lot of telemetry and information. Here at the top you could see the signal strength, the number of satellites, the battery level on the drone and its controller, the height and distance, and vertical and horizontal speeds. Here we have this icon here that will uh, switch between the bottom and the front facing camera as you can see here. So you can switch between both feeds. This icon right here will split the screen to put in VR or FPV goggles if necessary. And then uh, this icon right here will flip the image upside down if necessary as well. And the SD icon will allow you to change either from 2K or 1080p for recording video depending on how strong your mobile device is. And you can also take 4K photographs. Here's the photo gallery to view stored videos and photos and we have the automated flight modes here on the right this one here will allow you to draw waypoints so that the aircraft can fly those waypoints this icon below will enable either the follow me or gesture tracking mode and uh, the aircraft will follow your hand motions or follow you and then you have right over here the circle me function and then you have your return to home and you can obviously apply those while in map mode where you can draw your waypoints and submit those waypoints and then you can return back to FPV mode right here on the left hand side we have the photo and video options and we also have a music video option here that's kind of interesting here you can apply a lot of filters to the video and change the look and feel of it also you can apply some certain music and soundtracks here so very interesting you still have certain control over the drone in this mode as you can enable the virtual sticks and on this side you can change perspectives between either camera and then here we have a 50x zoom but it's just a digital zoom it's not a real true optical zoom and then we have our uh, virtual controls which you can enable or disable to control the quadcopter 
Then we have our rates of speed, our auto takeoff and land button, our motor lock and unlock button, and then last but not least, our camera tilt control here, which will allow you to tilt the camera upwards or downwards, and the emergency stop button there at the bottom. So overall, a lot of neat features with the drone. Unfortunately, there is quite a bit of lag in the FPV feed, and there is no SD card slot available, so the footage is whatever is streamed in. But aside from that, it does take good quality photographs, and it is a smooth flyer. So let's take it up for a spin and see how it performs.